Welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. It is time for a new series here on my channel. We started this with our points versus calories video. So many of you asked me to take a look at the number of points that you get in a day and we looked at the minimum number of smart points and how that relates to calories depending on the foods and the quantities of food that you're choosing throughout the day. So we did that video. It was a huge hit. I'll make sure to link that down below for you guys. But from that video, there has been so many additional questions on how calories and points play out. How do you figure out how many calories you need a day? Where do you track those calories? Can you use the WW app? What about macros? What should my macros be? How do I figure those out? The list goes on and on. So I thought that it would make sense to start a little mini series where I walk you guys through some of the most asked questions when it comes to calories versus points. Your starting point should absolutely be the video I've already put out, points versus calories. And again, that is linked down below. That will help make the rest of this little series make a little more sense. So today we're going to talk about calories. We're going to talk about how to figure out how many calories you need in a day. Where can you find that information? Where can you track that information? Is that something that you can use the WW app for and all the things? So if you're here for finding out about calories, how to figure them out, where to track them and more, just keep watching. little bit about calories. What is a calorie? I'm going to go ahead and put the definition of a calorie here on the screen for you guys. And I don't care what anybody tells you. The only way to lose weight is to be in a calorie deficit. No matter what plan you choose to do, whether that be WW or keto or Nutrisystem or whatever you choose, those plans put you into a calorie deficit. And that's how you lose weight. There is no other way around it. It's very black and white cut and dry calories in versus calories out. So what does that mean as far as WW goes? As I showed in the points versus calories video, depending on the foods that you're choosing during the day on WW, you can really be under eating your calories. We're talking a thousand to 1200 calories a day, which is honestly, despite the myth, not enough for any human being. Most of us burn that without even moving during the day. So we're gonna talk about what is the number of calories that you should be eating and why should you look at calories and smart points. In the video that I put out, points versus calories, a few people said, why are you tracking calories if you do WW? Just do WW. And I agree with that. That is, WW does take calories into account when they're determining smart point value. So yeah, it makes sense to think just do WW. However, through trial and error, through talking to so many of you, you guys thought that maybe you weren't eating enough. You were feeling a little hungry throughout the day. You weren't feeling satisfied. You were seeing weight come off and then you were seeing weight stay the same or gaining weight and you don't know what you're doing wrong because you haven't changed anything. You're staying within your smart points. And a lot of you even eat the same foods every single day. So it prompted you to take a look at the number of calories that you were eating. And a lot of you were absolutely shocked with the number of calories that you were consuming during the day versus the number of calories that you should be consuming during the day. You were eating all of your smart points and maybe even over your smart points, but you were substantially under your caloric goal for the day. And what does that mean? Who cares if you're under your calorie goal? You have to lower your calories to lose weight, right? Right, in a sense. Yes, you will see your weight fall off as time goes on with lowering the number of calories. Again, remember, calories in versus calories out is what's going to help you lose weight. However, if you are eating under your caloric goal for a substantial amount of time, what happens is your metabolism becomes affected. Your body gets used to that really, really low, low, low number of calories. So your body, if you eat any more than those low, low number of calories, your body is going to reserve that and save that. And you're going to see your weight loss come to a screeching halt. But the worst part about really under eating calories is the long term effect of doing that. And that is lowering your metabolism to that really low number of calories that you're eating, which then causes you to have a 
low metabolism and no matter what you do if you don't if you eat above the calories your body's used to it's going to affect your weight loss nobody wants to lower their metabolism or have their metabolism negatively affected because they're not eating enough calories so that's kind of in a nutshell what this video is going to be about that's the reasoning behind making this video. I am not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm simply someone on YouTube who does WW and ha who has done a ton of research when it comes to calories. I have really done the research to figure out my caloric goal. Now my caloric goal is gonna be different than your caloric goal, but I'm going to give you the tools in this video to figure out how many calories you should be eating for your body type. And I'm going to give you a ton of information and resources, so let's jump right in. So in order to figure out what your calories should be in a day, you need to first figure out what your BMR is. This is your basal metabolic rate. So essentially, this is the number of calories that you burn in a day doing absolutely nothing. These are the number of calories that you need every day just so your body can function. This doesn't include any activity and we're talking activity like brushing your teeth this caloric number is not included with brushing your teeth or doing any type of activity at all this is the base number of calories that your body needs just to function to pump your heart to function your liver to function your lungs all of that is what comes into your bmr now there are a ton of bmr calculators on the internet some of them you have to pay for some of them you have to enter your personal information in i usually skip those ones and i go to the ones that are legit free where i enter my information and voila it pops up my bmr my favorite calculator to determine your bmr is the bmi-calculator.net now i will link this down below for you guys but this one i find to be extremely user friendly it's very accurate I do encourage you to test out a few different calculators online I will link a few that I've come across ones that I've used to figure out my BMR I'll link those down below for you guys because they're all gonna give you just a little bit different numbers so what I did is I jotted down the numbers from the four or five calculators that I use and I took the average of that to determine what is my BMR there isn't a doctor that's telling me this I'm not taking any type of blood or or exercise tests in a medical facility to determine this. So logic would tell me to take the average of the numbers that I'm receiving from these online calculators. So first and foremost is determine your BMR. Once you have your BMR, you can determine your TDEE, which is your total daily energy expenditure. So this includes the calories that you burn every day just with your body function, but also includes calories that you'll burn on the daily with basic, basic movement. These are things such as brushing your teeth, cooking your food, using the restroom, walking to your mailbox, that type of thing. This doesn't include any activity at all, whether it's just a simple walk around the block or a jazzercise workout or lifting weights in the gym. Those are not included in your TDEE. This is just the number of calories that your body needs to function and to do basic things throughout the day. Once you have your BMR, you can use that to determine your TDEE. And again, you can use that same calculator online to do just that and again I'll list several calculator resources down in the description box this is going to give you an accurate overall take the numbers that you're given take the average and that's going to be your TDEE you can also determine your calories the old-fashioned way and there's a fancy name for this formula I'll put that here on the screen for you guys but without using an online calculator this is a very accurate way to determine your TDEE so what you're going to need in order to do this is for women you're going to take 10 times your weight adding 6.25 timesing that number by your height in centimeters so you do have to figure out your centimeters of your height minus five times your age in years minus 161. now this is also going to give you your tdee so there are several several ways to determine that but your bmr is the basis of your tdee and your tdee is the basis of how many calories you should consume in a day with no exercise once you determine your TDEE, you can then add any exercise that you do throughout the day. So sedentary to lightly active to moderately active to very active. What you're going to do is take your TDEE number and you're going to times that 
by the equation here on the screen based on your activity level, whether you're slightly active, moderately active, or very active, or completely sedentary. I recommend that you err on the side of caution and choose one that maybe is a little bit lower, just in case there are weeks that you aren't as active as other weeks or days that you're not as active as other days, and that way you're then going to have a little bit more of a deficit. Those are the overall calories that you need to eat in a day to maintain your weight. Now, if you're wanting to gain weight, you would obviously add some additional calories to that. If you want to maintain your weight, that is the number of calories that you should be consuming every day to maintain your weight. And if you want to lose weight, this is where you deduct calories from that bank and that puts you in a calorie deficit. So a couple of examples of calorie deficit numbers. If you are looking for about a half of a pound weight loss per week, you would want to deduct about 250 calories each day. And that should put you at about a half of a pound of weight loss each week. Now, if you want a little bit more moderate of a weight loss for one pound to maybe one and a half pounds, you would want to deduct at least 500 calories from your daily calorie total. And if you want a little bit more of an aggressive weight loss, more like one and a half to two pounds a week, you would then deduct a thousand calories from that number. And that will put you in that calorie deficit enough to give you a moderate weight loss, an aggressive weight loss, or a very mild weight loss, just kind of depending on what you want to do. Now remember, weight loss is not a race, you guys. It's a journey, so there's no need to necessarily take the aggressive weight loss route unless you think, number one, that is something you can sustain throughout your weight loss. If you don't think that you can eat a 1,000 calories a day less than you should, then you probably want to aim for 250 to 500 calories less a day and have a little bit slower weight loss. The slower you lose the weight, generally the weight stays off a lot better. That's not necessarily the case for everybody. There are people that can take that aggressive approach, lose two pounds plus a week, maintain that throughout their entire weight loss, and when they get into maintenance, completely rock it and keep all their weight off. But the majority of people struggle when they lose weight so fast to maintain that weight. So I, for me, like to take the more modest approach to weight loss. So the one to one and a half pounds a week, I'm happy with that. So I usually will take anywhere from 500 to 750 calories off of my total amount of calories that I should be eating every day. And that's how I lose weight in a moderate fashion. So I want to give you guys an example. We're going to take just your average woman, average height, average weight that needs to lose a little bit of weight that would probably get the minimum number of smart points on WW. And let's figure out what her BMR is, what her TDEE is, and the different number of calories that she should be eating based on whether she wants a mild, moderate, or aggressive weight loss. This is my favorite website. This is that BMIcalculator.net. So let's go ahead and enter Susie Smith's information here to figure out what Susie's BMR is. So she's five foot four. She weighs 165 pounds and she is 40 years old and she is of course a female. So all you have to do is click calculate BMR and right there is her BMR. So her basal metabolic rate is 1,485.55. Determine our TDEE, we can go here to this website. We're also going to do it with the Harris Benedict formula, which is even more accurate, but let's input Susie's information right here. So Susie, again, is 40 years old. She is a female. She is five feet, four inches. She weighs 165 pounds. Now see here, it's asking for activity because that is taken into TDEE. So let's say that she is sedentary, little to no exercise, because remember, we want to err on the side of caution. We're going to go ahead and hit calculate. There is her TDEE for body weight maintenance is 1,684 calories a day. So if Susie wants to maintain her weight, she needs to eat 1684. Now this particular site, I do like that it gives you some information here. If you wanna lose about a half of a pound a week, you should knock your calories down to 1434. Now that we've determined what Susie's BMR is, we've also determined 
her TDEE. Now we're gonna determine the number of calories that she needs in a day. It's very, very simple. So remember, we said Susie is sedentary, little to no exercise. So we're going to take her BMR number, which was 1,485.55, and we're going to times that by 1.2, and that is going to give us her total calories needed every day. And that number is 1,781.46. So you can see that we took 1,484.55 times 1 1.2 for sedentary. So in order for Susie to maintain her weight, she needs to eat 1,781.46 a day. Now, we want to talk about Susie losing some weight. So Susie wants a mild weight loss of roughly half of a pound per week, we take 1781.46 and we minus 250 calories because that is what we need for a deficit to get us to about half a pound a week. And that means that Susie needs to eat 1,531.46 calories a day. So basically 1531. Now what if she wants more of a moderate weight loss? So one pound to one and a half pounds a week. We're gonna go ahead and deduct 500 calories like you see right here. That means Susie needs to eat 1,281 calories every single day, about 1,282 actually every single day. And that is to lose one to one and a half pounds a week. Now for Susie to take the aggressive weight loss route isn't feasible for her. Because remember, she's only supposed to eat, if she wants to maintain her weight, 1,781.46. So there's no way that we could deduct 1,000 calories from that because that would put her at 781 calories a day, which is totally not something she should be doing. And even at 500 calories, She's only eating 1281, which is still pretty low in calories. So if you don't have a lot of weight to lose, it's recommended that you go with a mild weight loss. So more around 250. Now you could take the difference between 250 calories and 500 calories and maybe eat around 13 to 1400 calories and you're still going to see some weight loss on the scale. So it's very simple once you know your TDEE and your exercise that you're doing in a week to adjust your calories for weight loss. So by seeing the example of little Miss Susie Smith, you can see exactly how to determine your caloric needs. And remember, everybody's calorie needs are completely different. It's based on so many things, your age, your height, your weight, your activity level. So just because myself or another person on YouTube or a friend of yours eats this number of calories doesn't mean that those are the calories you should be eating. It's highly, highly encouraged for you to take these formulas, these calculators online, and figure out what your calorie needs are every day to maintain, to gain, and to lose weight. So now that you have this information, how do you track your calories? I get a lot of questions on whether or not you can track calories in the WW app. Yes and no. Unfortunately, the Weight Watchers app doesn't have what's called a secondary metric. So some of the apps out there, including iTrack Bytes, will give you the option to have a secondary metric. So you can track your points, but you can also track calories or macros or whatever you choose is your secondary metric. WW does not give us this option. However, there is a little bit of a workaround in the WW app. Whenever you log a food, so let's say that you're logging an egg into your WW app. If you click on the egg once it's logged, it gives you all of the nutritional information. It's going to tell you calories, fat, protein, everything. So you could use this as the workaround to track your calories. Now this is going to little be a little bit of a time intensive activity. You're going to have to open up every food that you've tracked for the day and plug those calories into a calculator, write them down on a piece of paper, and then figure out how many calories you've eaten that day versus how many points you've consumed. So this is doable in the WW app. If you're not looking to track in a secondary app or track a secondary way and you really just want to stay in the WW app, that is your workaround to figure out your calories. So what if this is just too much work for you and you don't want to have to manually add up your calories? There are a couple of free apps out there that track calories and macros. Now the next video in this series is going to be how to figure out your macronutrients, the percentage in grams that you should be eating each day to achieve the weight loss and health goals that you have set out for yourself. In these two free apps, you can track calories, macros, 
everything. I love the Lose It app. This is the app that I've been using to secondarily track my calories. Now, I double track. I track in the Weight Watchers app and I go in and track in the Lose It app as well so I can compare my calories to my points. For me, using the WW app, I'd rather just use the Lose It app and see it at a glance than having to do all the math. But you do what works for you in order to track your calories. But in the Lose It app, you can use it. They're free portion of the app and easily track your calories. Every food you can think of is in there. You can build recipes in the Lose It app if you want to know the calories of a recipe. You can also add in your own food if it's not in the actual app when you go to search for it. It basically works the same way as the WW app, but instead of tracking your points, it tracks your calories. There's also a premium version of the Lose It app. I decided to go ahead and invest in this because I use this app to not only track my calories, but also track my macronutrients. And it just made sense for me to take advantage of the premium service. It is $39.99 a year for the premium. I don't find that to be bad at all and it's well worth it to have your calories at a glance. You can adjust your calories. You plug your weight in, your calories will automatically adjust. You can have more of a calorie deficit, less of a calorie deficit. And again, you can track your macros in this app as well. So this is definitely my go-to app for tracking calories and macros. The other app is MyFitnessPal. All of you I'm sure have heard of MyFitnessPal. Again, they offer a free portion of their app as well and it does the same thing as Lose It. You can track calories, you can track macros, you can track activity. Basically all the things you do in the Lose It or WW app, you can also do in MyFitnessPal. They also do offer a premium portion of their app, which is $49.99 a year. So it's about $10 more than the Lose It app. And in my opinion, they both basically have the same function. But for me, I know this is gonna sound ridiculous. I just like the looks of the Lose It app better. I think it's pretty, I think it's more aesthetically pleasing, and I find it extremely user-friendly, a little bit more for me than my fitness pal. So that's just my preference, but those are a couple of free apps. You can find these on your phone, your tablets, and even on your desktop. I'll link these down below for you guys where you can track your calories. Also, both Lose It and my fitness pal will give you a calorie goal as well. I recommend that you take advantage of that and compare that to the calorie goal that you're getting from the other calculators and figures that you're doing for yourself to figure out your calorie goal for the day. And again, take the average and use that as your calories. You can simply go into the Lose It or MyFitnessPal app and change your calorie goal to the one that you want to go with. So it's very, very user friendly. The only thing is you are doing some double tracking. Now, if you're somebody that generally eats the same thing every single day, then you probably only need to double track once a week to see kind of where you're falling ca calorie wise versus point wise. But if you're somebody that changes up your food, your snack, even if you're having something for dinner every day, you may want to go in and plug that information back in to see where you're falling in your calories. Now, when I enter a food into the Lose It app or the My Fitness Pal, it saves that food. So it shows up when I click on breakfast, it shows my most recently tracked breakfast. So items. now that you've figured out your points and you figured out your calorie goal, what happens if you are finding that you're using all of your smart points, but you are extremely under your calorie goal? What should you do? So there are a few suggestions that I have for you. Number one suggestion is eat more zero point foods. Even though those foods have zero points, they still have calories. So add a chicken breast to a meal, add an egg or a hard boiled egg to a snack, pick some zero point foods that have a decent amount of calories, protein, fat and fiber, and add those into your meals. Have an extra snack during the day to get yourself to your calorie goal. Another thing that you can do is use your weeklies. I found that when we are given a set number of smart points on the daily. So whether that's 23, 24, 30, 40, 50, whatever your smart point goal is for the day, that number is going to put you at a severe calorie deficit. It doesn't matter what you're eating. It doesn't matter how many points you're getting in a day based on the minimum number of points that you're allowed during the day without using any weeklies, you are going to be at a severe calorie deficit. WW gives us our weekly so that we'll use them. And the whole purpose behind those is by adding those weekly points 
slash calories into our day, our week, once a day on our cheat meal or our cheat day. That is what's putting us at the calorie goal that we should be to lose weight. If we're not eating our weeklies, we are very, very much under eating our calorie goal every single day. So people are scared of weeklies thinking that it's going to prevent them from losing weight. Now, every body is different. So there are people that if they eat their weeklies, it affects their weight loss. There are people that eat their weeklies every single week and don't even see an effect on their weight loss every week when they weigh in. It depends on your body. But the weeklies are there to be used. So if you are finding that you are eating all of your points, but you are still severely under your calories, use your weekly points, but use them wisely. Use them to add some nut butter to your toast in the morning. Use them to have a serving of full fat dairy during the day. Maybe instead of having your Dan and Light and Fit yogurt for two points, have a Siggy's full fat whole milk. It's amazing and creamy and divine. Have that for five points instead. Use your fit points wisely if you're going to use them. Now for me, I have a cheat day once a week. My husband and I go out to dinner, breakfast, lunch, whatever suits our fancy every single Saturday. So that is the day that I use my weekly points. So I've chosen to use them all in one day. A lot of people will add a few here and add a few there. Some people will use them for special occasions. It's just depending on what works for you. WW is all about personalization. That's why there's three plans. So do how it works for you when it comes to using your weeklies. But take advantage of those weeklies, use them wisely, and I highly encourage you to plug those calories into your calorie app, whatever one it is that you choose. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised that you can stay within your blue dot range because remember, you can eat above your smart points and still be in a blue dot range. You'll feel a little more satiated and I guarantee you, you'll be a lot closer to your calorie goal every day. And this is the calorie goal to lose weight that you've determined, whether that be half a pound, a pound, one and a half pounds, two pounds, you're gonna be right where you need to be calorie wise. And lastly, as far as calories go, if you are someone that does a lot of activity, if you are an everyday workout person, if you're someone that has a very high intensity workout and you find even though you're eating all your points, you're eating all your weeklies, you're still a little bit hungry, feel free to dip into your fit points. Now, when we're given fit points, we're not given all the points for the activity that were burned. WW takes our entire activity, the calories, the points that we've earned doing that activity and gives us back a portion of those. So again, if you choose to eat all of your fit points, you should still see a loss on the scale because that is how the program is designed. So those are my tips for figuring out your calories, using weeklies, zero point foods, fit points to get yourself to your calorie goal every day and still seeing a great loss on the scale every week. The bottom line is calories in versus calories out. If you eat more calories than you're burning, you're going to gain weight. That's just science. That's a fact. That's the way that it works. So hopefully this video really helped you guys determine your number of calories and give you some resources to track those calories and compare those to the points that you're eating every day. I am going to be doing another video on macros. We're going to talk about how to figure out your macros and different macro balances as far as protein, fat, and carbs go to see what works best for your body. Definitely check out that points versus calories video that went up about a week ago. And in the next few weeks, I will be filming a what I eat in a week points versus calories. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how to put all of this information into action in that video. So stay tuned for that. But I thought that I would share the calorie information, the macronutrient information with you before that video comes out so that it all kind of comes full circle when that is put out here on my channel. So speaking of my channel, if you're new, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. I hope that this is helping you out in your weight loss journey, your WW journey, and just giving you some tips, tricks, and hints on how to track calories versus smart points. Make sure that you hit that little subscribe button and that bell so you're notified when new videos are uploaded. Check out the description box down below for all the links that we talked about today to lose it, my fitness pal, the calorie calculators, all of that information will be down in the description box for you, as well as how to manually figure out your TDEE for both men 
and women. Also in the description box is the link to head over and join my Facebook group. We'd love to have you guys over there. I do Zoom calls every couple weeks. It's just such a wonderful, supportive place to be. So we'd love for you to join our community over there. Also, all the links and discount codes to my favorite things are down in the description box as well. And my website where all of my recipes can be found. If you loved this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps out my channel and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you for sticking out with me through this video. It's probably Probably a long one and I hope that it really helped you guys out please leave any additional questions that you have down in the comments I am here to help you and answer your questions thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I'll see you all in my next video bye guys